There is no serial number. That's admitted. What does that mean? If I had time, I would take instructions. But if you go to the next column, my lord, yes. it says it is signed by two agents, ODM and Jubilee. So that the next question, my lord, why were the agents of ODM and Jubilee signing the form? All right, so those were the final submissions yesterday evening at the Supreme Court. And I want to bring in my colleague, Garita Sunina, joining us from our city centre studio. She has been following uh, this story for some time now. Rita, of course, uh, the judges uh, retreated back. Do we know if there is a specific place that they're all going to go to sit down and analyse all the evidence and the arguments that have been brought forward by all the parties? Well, there is no doubt they will be sitting together, they will be retreating somewhere, but this is one place that they are trying to keep uh, very secretive. We will be trying to find out, if we can, where they will be going. But it will be a tough two days. It has already been a tough uh, past two days, Monday and Tuesday, sitting for long hours, uh, trying to come up with uh, a few judgments, like the judgment or the ruling uh, on the whoever will be able to participate in this case, the amicus, uh, the interested parties. There was also uh, the issue, the application by NASA to have access to the uh, IEBC server. Some of the issues that they have already tried to sort out in the past uh, few days, but looking forward now, they just have two days, uh, if you like, maybe two and a half depending on what time they will uh, decide to give the ruling on Friday. They have until midnight. That is when the 14 days uh, given by the Constitution to hear and determine a presidential petition will lapse by yesterday. Uh, Justice David Maraga could not give uh, any indication of what time uh, the ruling will be given on Friday. But yesterday, after the session concluded uh, some minutes uh, uh, after 10 in the night, they will be retreating. We are not sure yet whether they started that retreat last night or they are starting the retreat this morning. But for sure, they will be retreating somewhere uh, to sit together to look at what uh, was provided, was uh, submitted before court orally, as well as the written submissions that the parties, the petitioners, as well as respondents uh, submitted and uh, put in the registry, uh, the Supreme Court registry. Uh, Betty, yesterday there was also the issue of Justice Mohammed Ibrahim. He was taken ill. He was not part of the session yesterday. We are not sure whether he will be joining uh, the other judges in the retreat, hoping uh, that he will be able to do so to give his own uh, uh, view of uh, matters before the judges cannot come up with a ruling, Betty. All right, uh, Rita, it's interesting that you brought in the issue to do with uh, Justice Mohammed Ibrahim. But just moving away from that, uh, from what you have been able to cover so far with the days at the Supreme Court, what would you say were the biggest highlights of this particular case? Well, uh, depending on how you look at it, there was the issue of the, the matters that were coming up. There was also the issue, even on social media, people saying uh, someone like PLO Lumumba, he spoke a lot of English, maybe some did not understand. There were light moments. There were those moments when fact after fact, if you may, uh, was presented. There was uh, Fred Ngatia who took much of his time uh, referring to the law, referring to the Constitution. There was James Orengo, when you come to the IEBC, anything that they did, Form 34 is the security features, the watermarks, when the results were announced, uh, giving times like uh, the first result came in seven minutes past five. There was a lot of detail coming in from all the lawyers, specifics to the uh, last detail you would expect that they would be having, considering that they had submitted volumes and volumes of documents. Yesterday, my colleague uh, Sophia Wanuna was speaking uh, to some of the lawyers, and they said for the last several days, they have not had even time to sleep, considering the amount uh, of work they had to do, going through those documents, getting the highlights that they will be presenting before court, getting the section of the law, the sections of the Constitution that they will be uh, referring the judges and other parties to the in the court to. So it has been a very busy day. 
uh, several days uh, for the, the parties, the legal teams, all uh, the respondents, the IEBC, the IEBC chairman, Uhuru Kenyatta, as well as the petitioner, uh, Raila Odinga, as well as Kalonzo Musioka, they had teams of lawyers, legal uh, counsel. NASA, for instance, had over a dozen lawyers representing them in court. The IEBC, more than five lawyers. I guess it's Uhuru Kenyatta who had the least uh, number of lawyers, just three lawyers uh, representing him there in court. And all those lawyers, I would say, top-notch lawyers in the country. Fred Ngatia, James Orengo, Ahmed Nasir, Abdullahi, if you, you like. These are some of the uh, well-known lawyers around the, the country and them presenting uh, their cases, uh, their views, uh, their facts uh, before court in the last uh, few days, Betty. It's interesting uh, analysis, uh, Rita, you have for us there. Uh, but finally, let's also talk about uh, Kenyans. Uh, from your analysis and assessment, do you feel like this time round, compared to the 2013 petition, Kenyans you know, followed through with this particular petition more? Uh, because we also saw quite a number of Kenyans trying to make their way to the Supreme Court. They were barred from entering because of uh, you know, the space and everything and the really interest that uh, is generated from elected leaders who are given priority. But you could see the interest that Kenyans had just also just uh, be part of the hearings and to sit in uh, the courts and do really, really follow through with what's uh, happening. So can you say that uh, this time round they were more interested compared to 2013 and even maybe that they understood um, the, you know, the, the legal terms even much better compared to that other time? Well, uh, Betty, if uh, social media is anything to go by, then you would say uh, this time around perhaps uh, people followed more keenly the proceedings in court. Uh, the issue of PLO Lumumba attracting a, a lot of conversation on social media. There are also people giving examples of what uh, words they captured during the presentations. There are also people making jokes, um, including... Uh, uh, I would say even uh, watching on local TV, all the major television stations were airing uh, these uh, proceedings live. So I, in my own opinion, I'd say people this time compared to 2013 were following the proceedings. And today, this morning, Betty, remember uh, City Hall, Wewa, Berra Street, uh, the roads uh, uh, near the Supreme Court had been cordoned off. They have now uh, been open to traffic. There was only human traffic allowed for the past uh, several days. Now it is back to normal, uh, but of course we'll be seeing uh, security back there on Friday, perhaps even more heightened security as the judges uh, prepare to deliver their ruling on Friday, even uh, more than we have witnessed in the last few days, Betty. All right, finally, uh, just talking about uh, that delivery of uh, the determination on Friday, uh, I remember this Chief Justice saying that uh, the Registrar of the Court is going to uh, inform the media and Kenyans, when is this going to happen? Do we know when uh, the, the, the court uh, registrar will actually make uh, this announcement of when really we should be expecting that determination on Friday. Well, I don't think it will come any time today or even tomorrow. I guess the, the judges will first of all sit uh, when they have almost come up with their own uh, ruling. Perhaps they can give an indication of when, but I also guess it will not be any time 